summer is always scorching in Skopje, but at least the political temperatures plummeted since this time last year. Now, tourists flock to frolic among the evidence of old arguments. Splashing out on statues and neoclassical buildings was the previous government's strategy that hoped to reinforce the claim to the name Macedonia. Adding the word north, though, ended the decades-long dispute with neighbouring Greece. And with heritage settled, this country should now be looking forward. There's little concrete evidence of change. All the nationalist kitsch remains in place and reforms have been slow to arrive. The government says impending NATO membership and EU accession talks will help, but it agrees it has to do more. We are still not there. Uh, the expectations are high, rightfully so. And we are aware that the, ex the citizens expect more and faster. Uh, these changes will not happen overnight but I think that the country has shown remarkable capacity to deal with its own weaknesses. And North Macedonia's young people have shown they have a knack for creative disruption. They painted the town red and a spectrum of other shades three years ago. That helped to force out the previous government. For now, young talent is focused on the burgeoning IT sector, but if the authorities don't act to improve prospects in North Macedonia, many will leave. I think the political will is there uh, among the political elites, but it needs also to transfer this political will into concrete action. And I think uh, we have to be a little bit patient, but we also have to be very vocal in asking for um, a lot more changes internally, not only the rebranding part. To some extent, North Macedonia is still dancing in the dark. Much hinges on whether EU membership talks get the go-ahead in October. If they don't, many people will feel the name change has been for nothing. Guy Delaunay, BBC News, Skopje.